In this video, I thought I'd take a, a, an opportunity to go through the uh, parts of the controllers tab um, and correct some of the things we're seeing in the Zoom room with how you set up your uh, items in the controllers tab. I have a pretty generic list of, of um, controllers in my setup here. I just wanna go through them from the top to the bottom. Uh, the very first one is if you have a Pi player, a show player, one that has your sequences on it, your music on it, and that's all it's going to do. You can create it now uh, as of late last year, I believe it was. You can add it to your controller list and you just add it like a normal uh, add ethernet. You create the entry, you say show player, you say it's the vendor is FPP. The model is FPP player only. That's, that's kind of critical. And then you have the IP address where, where it is on the internet. And what I found helpful is to place in the description the name of the Pi or the host name. So often the default is FPP. Sometimes you change it to FPP main, FPP show player, whatever, but then you don't remember it later. So use the description as a place to hold that name here so that you can remember it next year when you restart your, your show, or even if you forget your IP address or something like that, you can remember the name. So that's the show player. Note it's special that it has zero channels. That's very important. If you don't set it this way, you get a one channel there or something weird and it will bump everything off. So go with this new feature with FPP player only. Add it to your list of controllers. You, you will place to hold your IP address, etc. Really handy. The next one I have is a Falcon. Falcon is very similar to a um, uh, an experienced genius controller, a dragon controllers, any of those controllers that do not have an SD card on them. That's probably, you know, this is a generalization, but it, it, it normally is a controller that does not have an SD card on it. So they are the you, you set it up the exact same way, but the key thing that you want to remember there is set it to active. It, it should be active because the show player has to send data to this controller to make it work. Another thing we often recommend is changing your default brightness. By default, when you install a controller, it's at 100%. Nobody seems to run it at 100% anymore, especially with displays that have thousands of pixels in them. You, you'd be, it'd just be blinding your neighbors. Go with 10, 20, 30, 40%. This is just a default. You can override it at the prop level. You can override it at the port level. Still lots of variables to change it, but this is the default in case you don't set it. That's pretty much the only two key pieces you need here. Check out my the check marks I have here. Auto layout models, auto size, full x lights control. Those three options are what you want. The next controller I have here in my list is a typical Pi Hat controller. Again, uh, I push put the name of the Pi in here. So it's blacktop pi cap dot local. It's a FPP, it's a Pi hat, it's a variant, etc. In this case, you have four choices. We often suggest you do not check the auto upload configuration because what happens there is when you do an output to lights, it repushes the configuration, causes a delay. And if you have lots of controllers, that can really get things all messed up. So just be safe and uh, leave it as unchecked. For um, a, a, a Pi based or a controller that has an SD card, change the active to X lights only. What that means is only X lights is allowed to tell it what to do, i.e. when you're doing the output to lights, but no other controller, no other Pi player tells it what to do in terms of pushing sequence data to it. Sure, the show player will tell it to start a sequence, it'll tell it to stop a sequence, but it won't push the data saying, light up bulb one, light up bulb two. Only x lights is allowed to do that. Uh, have your IP address in there, of course. That's pretty much it. Keep channels is a special thing. Leave it checked. In most cases, leaving it checked is what you want. There are special cases, and if you need help on that, come to the Zoom room. Uh, we can set you straight, but most places you would leave that checked. I have a Kurt controller because I'm from Canada, and uh, he, he's a local Canadian. It's very similar to a Culp controller. It's a typical BeagleBone-based controller, BeagleBone being a, a sort of like a variant of a Pi, a little single board computer. Set up in the very similar way to the Pi that we just went through. Again, uh, leaving auto upload turned off. The other three check marks are turned on. I would change the default brightness, say, to 30. Now, active. I would change that to X lights only again, because it has an SD card. It will not be told what lights to turn on unless it's X lights. If you did the output to lights, it would turn it, it would say, okay, I, I'll let X lights talk to me, but I won't listen to other controllers or other players try to tell me what to do. 
um, I have everything I need on my SD card because you're going to do that with your um, tools FPP Connect. Um, a lot of people are putting projectors in their displays. You can place it on the bottom of the list. You can place it on the top of the list. Um, I, I, I have a special case where I like to put it on the bottom list. But many people will put it at the top of the list or just underneath the show player. Because remember, the show player has zero channels. So that, that doesn't impact us at all. But you place it at the top of the list because these channel numbers never really change. Once you've defined how big your projector is going to be, it's going to be static. It's going to be set to, in my case, 1800. Um, this way, you know it's not going to get moved around. Since it's a Pi, it's set up the exact same way as we already covered. Um, uh, auto upload is turned off. Active, again, turning that to X lights only. And IP address, of course. Protocol is not really important here. Um, one thing that's catching some people is the model. If you have a Pi 3, you would use um, virtual matrix. If you have a Pi 4, you would use the Pi 4 virtual matrix. The difference being on a Pi 4, there are two HDMI outputs. This gives you the option to determine where to put the um, matrix on your visualizer. Oops, I, my test display. It should come up with my visualizer here, just a second. And yes, well, sort of. Hopefully this is okay. Anyway, down here below, you've, you can see you got two choices to put your virtual matrix. I put it on the virtual matrix one, which is the closest to the power um, input on a Pi 4. This stuff all being read is because I created a test layout for this video, so you can ignore that for now. I think that's it. You should be able to go through the list from top to bottom, verifying things. This is set to active because it's a player on it. It doesn't even really matter. Um, it's not used. The projector, leave that one unchecked. And X lights only. A Falcon Genius Dragon controller where it doesn't have an SD card. Again, that's a generalization, but if it doesn't have an SD card, it likely needs to be set to active. It needs to be told what to do. Um, uh, my FPP based controller, my Pi Hat controller, is set to X lights only. DDP E131, they're essentially the same. DDP is a little bit faster, a little bit tighter, um, but either one should work just fine. It's really no difference. And my last one, again, being a Culp uh, Kurt controller, very similar to a Culp controller, um, your typical BeagleBone based controllers that are out there or Pi based controllers. You got to make sure you get the vendor right. You got to make sure you get the models right. Otherwise, when you upload to the controller, it's going to scream at you and say, hey, this is not matching what the controller tells me I am. If I choose and I'm going to select something here. If I choose this one and I actually have this one, it's going to scream at me when I do the upload. If I have a pocket beagle, PB, pocket beagle, and I upload it and the beagle bone says, no, I'm a beagle bone, it's going to scream at you and say unknown strings, etc., etc. That's it. This is your controller tab. Go give it a one th through. It's going to avoid a lot of issues you have with uh, potential lagging when two controllers are telling each other what to do. Um, your your uploads are going to be uh, more successful if you got X lights only in the right spot, so your active is in the right spot. Now, remember, when you have these, every time you make a layout change, i.e. go into the visualizer, change the no counts, etc., go from the top of the top to the bottom, go to the top, upload your outputs, go to the next one, upload your outputs, go to the next one, upload your outputs, go to the last one, upload your outputs. If you have a lot of controllers, there is an option here, tools, bulk controller upload and you can actually click them all off, one, two, three, four, and bang, hit the upload. It will upload all four at the same time or you know, sequentially, so you don't have to do one, two, three, four. You need to do that every time you change your layout or something in your visualizer because these channel numbers here will all shift on you and it'll cause wackiness out on your lights when you go and play your sequences. After you've done all your controller uploads, chances are you wanna to go to a tools batch render and select your sequences Render them all so that the re the layout that you have in here now matches the actual sequences that you put on your display to, to be played on the controllers. If not, you're going to get channel mismatch and you'll get snowflake stuff showing on your stars and trees showing on your matrix, etc. It's just a big mess. These are your tips for today. Hope it helps you. Thanks.